So we stopped in Headley. Uh, it's getting pretty dark here, and uh, we just thought we'd tell you about the gold mines here. In 1897, gold was discovered, sparking the start of a very lucrative mining industry for this small town. At its height, over one and a half million ounces of gold were leaving Headley each year. In the late 1950s, the hills started to run dry. Today, you'll find a quiet village among the history. We were all getting a little tired, so we found a roadside rest area. Not that kind, but we've pulled over and we're going to set up the tent on the side of the highway. Uh, good morning. How did you sleep? Considering I slept with two other guys in a two-person tent, which was one over the limit, I slept pretty good. And considering we were right next to a highway with a ton of semi-trucks that went through in the middle of the night honking at us, and also using their jake brake and making really loud noises, I'd say I slept pretty good. And considering that there was a car that drove by and hit a deer and got in an accident in the middle of the night, and we had to get up and check that they were okay, well, I slept pretty good. And now it's the morning. We have some decent views. I'm ready for a fun day of excitement and shenanigans. <laughs> Leave it on your own to feed. Leave it on your own to feed. Leave it on your own to feed. Well, it's just as easy as one As we were getting a few shots of downtown, there was a guy that came up to us, started talking to me about my car, but he really wanted to inform us of this amazing restaurant, which turned out to be quite superb. The pancakes were about the size of my head, and I'm not exaggerating, I have proof, because I measured. That was pretty impressive. Syrup goes on everything. We all enjoyed our meals and it was off to the fruit stands. Yeah, the place is pretty much known for its fruit stands. It's the fruit stand capital of Canada, so I've been told. There's at least a dozen fruit stands along the main stretch, one every couple hundred meters or so, that are all just jam-packed with some of the Okanagan's freshest fruit. So we loaded up the Geo and headed on our way to Penticton, known as Canada's Hollywood, which I think got that moniker because of a resembling sign in the hills. The population nearly doubles in the summer and could be due to the fact that they don't have just one awesome lake, but two with the town sandwiched right in between. It's really the best of both worlds. We hit a rather unfortunate stretch of weather for late spring, but I didn't let that stop me from taking a dip in the Skaha. Sure, I was the only person brave enough to endure the cold waters, but like my glass hard nips would confess, it was necessary. You know, I was just thinking, it's probably a good thing that it wasn't really hot out today because we're all very pale because we've had an unusually cloudy and wet spring. That's my least favorite thing about the beach is getting all the sand off of your feet afterwards. And you just can't seem to wipe it off the way that you have hoped you could. It just sticks. We are now on the other side of Penticton. This lake here is the Okanagan Lake. A lot bigger than Skaha Lake. It's huge, as a matter of fact. And there's something lurking in these waters. Something formidable. Who's ever heard of the Loch Ness Monster? That's right, most people have. Well guess what? Nessie, the majestic creature from the Emerald Loch, has a Canadian cousin. That cuz is called the Ogopogo. All I'm gonna say is swim or beware. Dun dun dun! Alright, 
I'm not joking around right now. This view, it's gorgeous. Almost as gorgeous as this cherry. I need to go to the dentist. My gums are bleeding. <laughs> Around 80% of all British Columbia's wine grapes are grown in Naramata, Penticton, Osoyoos, Oliver, Kelowna, and the Okanagan. They're some of the finest wines that are produced here in the world. We were driving up the Naramata Bench Road, just up and down, up and down, and we were just going past all these incredible wineries. We knew that we had to go in and stop at one and just see what was up. So we chose one, just kind of randomly the Red Rooster. Well, randomly as in it looked the most appealing. So we show up, went inside, asked if we could film and have a tasting and they were more than happy to accommodate. Alright, welcome. I'm here with Romina at the Red Rooster Winery in Naramata. I'm pretty excited. It's been a while since I've had a glass of wine, let alone several. How many different types of wines do you guys create? Um, about 20. Oh wow. Yeah, we have a few different varieties. All of the grapes are located all over the Okanagan. The only grapes that we produce right here is the Malbec, which is kind of exclusive to the winery. It's the only one that you'll actually find here. Um, you won't find it in liquor stores or anywhere else. You oh. have to come right here to find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just guide me through this. Okay, now you so, do a bit of a swirl. And that kind of just opens up aromas in the wine. Hold it down a little and look at the color, look at different aspects of the wine. Um, as long as there's nothing in the, floating in the wine, you know that it's not corked, that there's nothing nothing tainted in it. Okay, there is some fruitiness yeah, on the nose. Yeah, do you pick up a little rhubarb or strawberry in there? Like almost apricot too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe that's because we had apricots earlier. That might be why. <laughs> um, again, when somebody tells you what you're supposed to pick up, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're gonna pick up. Mm. So tartness is another word. Um, basically, it means that you have to kind of suck in. Um, it's the crispiness in a wine. For yeah. Sure. Well, then I would say that this one to me is crispy. Crispy. It kind of, a bit. It's like when it's you have a sour candy and. It, all of a sudden your mouth just swells with that energy and that flavor. The reason why this is our um, signature is because we produce it right here. This is our home vineyard. Oh right, this is the one that won't be sold in stores? Yeah, this is the oh, one okay. that you'll only find here. And you'll only vineyard. find it here, so yeah, so just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so this one spent um, 10 months, I believe, in French and American oak. So French oak makes it smooth, vanilla-y. Yeah, that's really smooth. Yeah. The vanilla was right on. Mm -hmm. Let's give that a second go yeah. after our sniffy sniff. So what do you think yeah. of that one? Well, right away, I get a bit of bitterness on the front end, mm -hmm. and then it completely smooths out. A ton of vanilla. All of these are quite exceptional mm -hmm. uh, for somebody who's not usually a wine connoisseur. Mm -hmm. Gotta go to the Red Rooster. <laughs> it's the most exceptional place in the Naramata. <laughs> yes. Good. It's a lemon. I was really happy that we got a chance to explore, taste, and divulge in the Red Rooster here in Naramata. <laughs>